Oh, welcome back to the podcast. Today we're gonna to be talking about one of my favorite things that's not really fitness or nutrition related, but at the same time totally is. That is organizing. Today we are gonna to be talking about clearing space and how clearing space in your physical space will help you transform on the inside. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Wellness Simplified Podcast. Simple wellness tips to help you improve your life without turning it upside down. With your host, award-winning fitness instructor, nutrition coach, and wellness expert, Susie Fevens. Hello and welcome to today's podcast episode. I hope you've been having a great day, great week, whatever day or week you're listening to this. I'm really excited to talk today about clearing some space because it really is like one of my favorite things. I love organizing things. When I was 11 years old, my brother was in a car accident and we spent much of the summer um, driving back and forth to see him because he was in the hospital. And when I was hanging out in waiting rooms, I would organize their reading material by size, then by magazine, and then chronologically, like <laughs> organizing is my jam. When we moved, um, we lived with my parents for a while while our house was being built. And the first night we moved, I couldn't go to sleep until I alphabetized our movies because I could see them from our bed and I just could not handle <laughs> them being everywhere. I'm not quite so OCD now, but who oh boy, do I love to organize. So I'm excited about today's episode because truly, even though they're not related, they absolutely are. Um, creating space, creating space. And today we're actually literally talking about the space around you or right now, whether you're sitting in your car, you're sitting in your office, your bedroom, kitchen, wherever the heck you might be. That is the space that we are talking about here today. When our physical environment is simplified and organized, we have more mental and emotional space available to us to create and grow. So when you look at the space around you, I want you to think about it as a reflection of what's going on inside of you. I mean, that's, this is, it's not hundred percent accurate. I mean, I don't have a picture of my brain to know if the books are alphabetized or in rainbow colors or what they are, but generally speaking, if your life around you and your space around you is super chaotic, then that's what's going on inside of your brain. You're having a hard time finding calm, finding simplicity. So taking the time to create space in your space can really be a very impactful way of helping you work through some things internally. Do you remember the, um, oh gosh, what was it called? And I'm sure I've talked about this on the podcast before, I think in my episode with Laura Churchill Duke, which let me see, was episode number six, which was all about finding that easy first win. Um, it was on TLC. Oh, and it wasn't changing spaces. It wasn't trading spaces. It was the one where they went in and they like organized somebody's place, you know, when they had the, the tarps out with the keep, toss, and donate piles. Anyway, there's something to be said about that type of work going in and taking care of the stuff for somebody. But a lot of times when we're talking about our more intimate spaces, so our actual work desks, our car, that sort of thing, it's not the physical space that needs help. It's the internal space. So if somebody else comes in and cleans it out for you, you don't get that same um, level of result. And then six months from now, you find yourself back in the same position. Of course, that's not always true. Sometimes it is a breakdown of your systems. Yes, people, I have binge watched the home edit on Netflix. And if you haven't, you really should because it is such a delight. But if it's not a system, and Laura talked about this also, if you organize something and then three months from now it is not organized, you didn't fix the problem. So that is part of it. So part of that self-discovery is picking away until you find out what the problem was and fixing it. And sometimes the problem may be manifesting physically, but it is something that is happening internally. And I'm getting a little bit woo woo here. I'm a little bit further off topic than I had planned, but you know, I never know where this is going to go. <laughs> and then it just goes there. Anyway, so if I feel, I feel like this is something that unless you are doing um, just a big purge of stuff, then you don't know where to start. 
if it's these smaller spaces, you really should do them yourself because that's when you have to work through some of those mental blocks at the same time of what, what to get rid of and what to hold on to, what's no longer serving you, what still is, which habits are still working for you, which ones aren't. And I feel like you need to be in the depths of that to help determine that. And when you do that in your physical space, it helps mirror that in your internal space. So let's think about the space you're in. Again, I'm sitting at my office desk. But that's not the space I want to talk about. I want to talk about my kitchen. My kitchen isn't a disaster. Um, but we've had this buffet that we got. And we purchased it with money that we got as wedding gifts. So we've had it for 15 years. And it's always just, it's never really had a real purpose. In the top of it, it's always just had like some pictures and some knickknacks and a candle or two. It had real no purpose. And yet it was sitting like right in the kitchen. And on the weekend, I thought, you know what? enough is enough. 15 years is enough. I'm turning that into a coffee bar. So I cleared all the stuff off of it. I set up my Nespresso and my Arancino and I put all my little pods on there. And then I left a couple of the things that were on there, like my salt lamp um, and Alexa. She's still hanging out there. I have to whisper her name because I don't want her to start talking to me. Um, and then just like a fake plant or something and just style it out a little bit. And now every time I walk by, oh my gosh, if it it fills me with glee. Every time I see it, it fills me with glee. It took maybe 20 minutes. I would argue that it wasn't cluttered before, but it really served no purpose. And, you know, sometimes a space without a purpose is fine, but it was really central in the kitchen. Our kitchen is not big, and it was ridiculous for us to not be using that for something. So I made it into my coffee bar, which opened up a bunch of space on our island and I took our juicer and I put it on the island because theoretically we are juicing on Sundays and Wednesdays which is our days off and that'll make it much easier because there's an outlet right there there's a sink right there everything that we need um so it really kind of freed up some space on the island even by adding the juicer it's still got more space and then you know, one thing led to another. The next thing I know, I was cleaning out the inside of the hutch and then I reorganized my whole tea section. The next thing you know, I was organizing crafts. Like it just was this tumbleweed <laughs> effect and I didn't spend a cent. I spent some time. I spent some time on Sunday, but oh my gosh, there is like four places in this house that I wouldn't really say was a mess before, but now every time I see them, I like get the biggest nerd grin on my face. Like I keep turning and looking at one of them right now. And that is like my craft nook. <laughs> and it just delights me so much. And it's truly, I didn't spend any money. It was just a couple hours because I kept moving, you know, one thing to the next and that didn't have some, and then you had to put it over here. And then anyway, so, so nice. It cleared some space, some space that I'm not sure I would have even defined as being cluttered but was not working optimally for me. It was an area that was no longer working for us and now it is. And everything just seems so much nicer. And it's all the same stuff. It's just been implemented into a better use of space. Maybe a system of some sort has been put in place so that things will stay nice. So my next big project is I want to organize our pantry. So some of you may remember, or maybe you didn't know, last fall I ripped the uh, pantry doors <laughs> off the pantry because apparently I'm just too strong. Um, and it happened like three times over a couple of weeks and I had enough, I had a meltdown and I said, I'm not putting those back on. So our pantry is open to the world. And at the time I went to the dollar store and I bought a few baskets and things and it worked pretty decently. But now here a year later, it's getting kind of cluttered and it isn't really functioning as well as I'd like it. So there is some changes that need to happen there. And I'm very excited about going and buying some new containers so that I can reorganize the pantry better to make it into a better system. If it's not staying clean, you haven't solved the problem. So my problem isn't completely solved and I need to get a few pieces in order to really make it function properly. And of course, I am very big on not going out and buying stuff just for the sake of buying it. But I think after a year, I have determined what it is that I need and I need some like clear storage containers 
that are airtight to keep the food fresh but that you can see and because the doors don't close I want it to look kind of pretty and I hate looking at all those boxes we don't have a lot of box foods but you know just having like four or five boxes of cereal and crackers and whatever it just is ugly so I'm making a list so I can go to the store and buy however many containers and baskets I need so I can make it look pretty and hopefully that will be the system that works and if not I'll continue to tweak it little by little but we to the point now that I'm going to invest a little bit more money, not a lot of money, I'm thinking it's going to cost maybe 50 or $60 to transform this pantry. But the amount of satisfaction I'm going to get out of that pantry is there is no limit. There is no limit to the satisfaction I will get out of it. And having that clear space is going to create more space. I'm going to be able to better see what we have so we don't over purchase and we can better use what we already have instead of always having to go buy something when we feel like we don't have anything to eat. And I don't feel like we do that a whole lot now. I have a pretty good handle on what we have as far as food at any given time, but it's gonna be even better. And I'm very excited because it's gonna look aesthetically pleasing all at the same time. Now I realize not everyone is so passionately excited about organization as I am, but I do know that everyone is passionately excited about having more space, more freedom in their mind and in their actual physical life. So I want you to find some little spot in your car, office, house, wherever, maybe it's a drawer that just kind of bothers you that you know wouldn't take that long to fix, but you just never get around to fixing it. You're gonna set a timer for 15 minutes and you're gonna go do it. You know, this is like the, one of the memes you see floating around about the, I complained about the burnt out porch light for eight months and then it took me 30 seconds to change it. That's what I want you to do. I want you to find one or two or three, depending on the length of them, things like that set a timer and go do it. Today, like in the next hour, if possible, if you're in your car and you're always irritated about all the crap that's in your console, when you park the car, open that console up, take a couple minutes and clean it out. You're gonna create space and it's going to relax you the next time you open it up and you're gonna be like, oh gosh, I'm so glad I did that. You're not not gonna say, oh man, I wish I would have left this stog full of napkins I'm never gonna use. Set yourself a timer, 15 minutes, see what you can get through. You might not be able to finish a project, but you could get a good, good start on one. And if you don't know where to start, I'm going to challenge you to start somewhere in your kitchen. Maybe you have a bowl or a container where you keep um, kitchen utensils, or maybe they're in a drawer, um, wherever you hold your pot holders or, uh, oven mitts, one of those awkward places that people don't really think a whole lot about. I want you to go through, pick out the things that you actually use, pick out the things you would use if you would remember that they were there and get rid of the stuff that you don't use or don't need anymore. It doesn't have to be a big time investment to get back a lot. I cleaned out one of our drawers. It was the one with the pot holders and the oven mitts a few years ago because it was always crammed full of stuff. I can't remember what else I was keeping in there. Oh, I was keeping like the saran wrap and tin foil and stuff that we very rarely use. And every time you open the drawer, you know, it would get caught. And uh, so I took those out and put them in the pantry, the pantry without the doors. And uh, it's so much nicer in there. But it, that was like a three minute project. I know you have one. I know you have one of those projects. It's not going to take you any time to complete, but you just haven't done it. I want you to do it. Set a timer. Do it. I want you to set a timer. I want you to tell me what you did. Tag me on Instagram. Send me a message at Susie Confesses. Let me know what you did. I want to know. I truly want to know. And the reason I wanted to challenge you to go to the kitchen if you didn't know where else to go is when our kitchens reflect the same care and order we desire in our personal lives, the time we spend there and the meals we produce become capable of nourishing us in new ways. We're talking about prana, the life force. When you are able to cook in a place that makes you happy, that doesn't stress you out, make you cranky, you're able to transfer that love into your food 
and it will be more nourishing. And I don't care if that sounds woo woo to you or not, but when you make food with love, it always tastes better. And how can you put love in your food if you're stressed out the whole time you're in your kitchen because you have so much stuff piled on the countertop or you have drawers that are crammed with so much stuff or whatever your issue might be? Clean your space. Make room for love, relaxation, happiness. You'll put more love in your food. You'll put more love in your life and you'll just be happier. And you'll also be able to live more intentionally. Have you ever heard about people whose closets were bursting with clothes? There's another place you could start. And when they really pared down and went to like a capsule wardrobe, they found that they actually had more variety in what they wore because they could see everything that they had instead of always having to dig, dig, dig in piles. It's the same idea. We want to create that capsule wardrobe of your life. I might have gone a little bit too crazy there, even for me, but living intentionally, it can make such a difference. And by creating space, by learning to step back and breathe, you'll be able to understand your own reactions and what triggers them more easily. So when you have more space, when you're not surrounded by so much clutter, think again, your physical space represents what's going on in your mind. If you have room in your physical space for you to feel things, to work through things, you're going to create that same sort of effect in your mind. Create some space. Even if you think this has been total nonsense, I'm sure you still have a drawer in your house that drives you crazy every time you open it and it's crammed full of stuff. Create some space. Clear it out. If you haven't used it in a year or more, you probably are not going to use it. Create some space. Live intentionally and live happier. That's it for today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed this one. And yes, I absolutely want to know, what did you clear? What did you clear? Did you just empty out a trash can? Because sometimes in those awkward rooms where you don't really use the trash so, so much, that trash can pile up for a long time. Clear out some garbage from somewhere. Organize a drawer. Organize something and let me know what you did. Have a wonderful weekend, rest of your day, week, whenever you were listening to this, and I will talk to you again next time.